Hello, and welcome back to the longest talking out Oscar segment you will watch from me. Because these are my final Oscar predictions in all categories. I'm John Stark from MacTheMovieGuy.com. I'm a blind film critic, so in case somebody shared this video with you as to what my thoughts are and why I'm voting for what, um, <clears throat> this is what it is. This is These are my thoughts. Uh, I'm not going to be... A douche and uh, start with the least popular <laughs> categories and hope that you'll stay for best picture. I'll do the reverse. I'll be a nice guy and figure that no one. If you if you don't want to stay for short, that's up, that's up to you. You can tap out whenever. I figure people aren't gonna sit through this whole thing. Um, so yeah, I'll start with best picture and work my way through. So I'll just go ahead and say if you're new subscribe because I usually put that at the end of my video I'm not usually fronting that but I I don't know how long this is gonna be because um, I do want to actually talk about every category and uh, with me today is my lovely computer because if you think I remembered every vote in 24 categories from memory <laughs> you lost your damn mind um, all right so uh, coming up so if you hear weird robotic voices, everything, every, best there picture. you go. Look at that. That's a weird robotic voice. That's what I got. That's what we live with. If you're, if you've never dealt with a blind person before, we have computers that talk to us. Normally I wear headphones, but, uh, I'm just not at this time. Um, it's a lot of wires and everything. So coming up on, um, <laughs> at best picture, um, I'm going with, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Banshees of Inna Sharon, The Fablemans, Top Gun Maverick, Tar, Elvis, Avatar, The Way of Water, All Quiet on the Western Front, The Whale, and RRR. Okay, so now that we've gotten that out of the way, <laughs> I kind of did it from most likely to least likely to like how I feel about it. Um, with some respects to maybe I would flip how I just said Avatar and uh, All Quiet. I think All Quiet has a slightly better chance. I think the tea leaves, uh, if you read them early on, I kicked myself. I kicked myself so hard because early on, way back in the day, I had All Quiet and Best Picture. And then I started to see the foreign language thing, and I was like, what's going to happen? What, oh, okay. And I kept committing myself to this idea that there could only be one foreign language entry this year. And I think there might be two. The thing is the best picture goes by ranked choice voting. And I've heard a lot of reasons why a lot of these bubble films should or should not be on the list. And uh, basically, I'm not going to discuss the top seven. Everything through Avatar, I consider to be a lock. So let's discuss the bottom three. Let's discuss why I'm going with All Quiet, The Whale, and um, RR. Because if you look at pretty much any other pundit, they're going to predict the other seven. Uh, there isn't really... <laughs> Unless there's somebody who's just going crazy, <laughs> you know? who's Who really just is trying to, I don't know fight the system or something um, and be like, Tar is not going to get nominated. It's going to blow everybody's mind. It's like, I hope that would blow everybody's mind, but that's why most people are predicting it is because it's... Anyway. Um, so, uh, All Quiet, the tea, the tea Leaves are there. It just literally just became the most nominated BAFTA film. <laughs> it became the most nominated international feature at the BAFTA since Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. It also got the most shortlisted at the Oscars, at our Oscars here in America, it made the most shortlists. So um, the Oscar predictors, the reason why Gold Derby has had it so low for so long is because they were basing everything based on critic lists. I don't know where the disconnect is with critics and the actual industry, but it seems like the industry likes this film a whole lot more than critics actually give it credit for. So... Um, I expect All Quiet to show up a lot more places than it does. It does have Netflix campaigning it. So it does have a studio that has the ability to throw money behind it and make sure that you have seen All Quiet on the Western Front. So 
that is an easy back on my list. I'm so glad it's there. Uh, number nine, I went with The Whale. It's actually a PGA nomination. I was looking at uh, last year, the PGA got eight of 10 correct. Um, and with The Whale, it's actually been performing quite well in limited release. It's a lot of things people, not that box office necessarily matters, but when you're talking about reception, you have films like The Fablemans and Tar, it's already outgrossed. Um, and yet those are considered to be locks for best picture. <laughs> You know, so it's it's chugging along, and it, it it hasn't even hit wide. I don't even think it's wide yet. Uh, and it's already in the teens in terms of its total gross, which is for a film aimed at an adult audience with, um, you know, with that kind of baggage, I it's kind of a feat. I don't know that it's going to sweep. I, don't, I didn't predict it everywhere, uh, but I have it a couple places. It's going to show up a little bit. I don't think it's going to be a massive... Uh, thing that's gonna just take out the competition but I think there's a lot of people who love a good cry and I think the whale is doing that for them I think people had I think it had dipped out for a while because we were having conversations about fat suits and what that means but I think once more and more people have started to see the whale people are considering less and less about the fat suit and more and more about oh my god this film makes me cry so I think it's divisive but then again, I think a couple of the bubble films are divisive. And number 10, I went with RR. I went with RR because um, it's ranked choice voting. And the thing is that when you talk to people, there are people out there that really love RRR. There are people who put RRR at the top of their list. There are people who... Document absolutely, one. like, Word have window. to Document up. one. Editing. shut up. <laughs> who, abs who absolutely have to have RR uh, and who love it. And I think because of ranked choice voting, I'm looking at films, I'm looking at the Everything, everywhere, all at once. And I'm seeing stuff like Babylon, right? And I'm seeing Triangle of Sadness. And I'm seeing Black Panther Wakanda Forever mentioned. And Women Talking, which is going nowhere, by the way. Um, if that, if the deafening lack of nominations at BAFTAs is an indication of anything, and the fact that we've been watching it just kind of drift f further and further away, she said got more BAFTA nominations than Women Talking. I don't know what's happening with that film, and I'm not saying it's like a, uh, there's anything wrong with the movie, but I cannot put that in Best Picture. The tea leaves are moving away from women talking. Technically, if you were to go with the Gold Derby top 10, you would be predicting women talking. They still have it in the top 10. However, um, I have to go with RR. Ranked choice voting, I'm thinking in an, in an open race like this, when you're looking for that 10th spot, you're looking for who got the most number ones, who got the most top votes. And I think RRR is going to be that film. I think there are going to be enough people who push that to number one that it ends up sneaking in over Babylons, who may get fourth or fifth, Triangle of Sadness that may get fourth or fifth, Glass Onion that may get fourth or fifth, Black Panther that may get fourth or fifth. I just think the other films are not number one choices. I don't see a whole lot of people running around putting those films at the top of the list, but I do hear and see about it with RR. I actually think that those might be the two, and that is is consistent with PGA, which typically does not pick international films. So I'm actually predicting two international features in our best picture race this year. <laughs> there you go. Alright, so the bench the fave top gun tar Elvis all avid the wheel RR blame. That's best picture. Uh, best Actress. We'll go to Best Actress next, because this is an interesting category to talk about. So for Best Actress, I'm going with Kate Blanchett for Tar, Michelle Yeoh for Everything Everywhere All at Once, Danielle Detweiler for Tar, Ana de Armas for Blonde, and Viola Davis for The Woman King. I think Babylon has slipped a little bit. I think Margot Robbie is probably in sixth place, if I was being honest with myself here. 
I think Michelle Williams is doing too much vote splitting. I think what's happening with Michelle Williams is she's not the number one choice. Whether you're voting for her in lead or you're voting for her in supporting, she wouldn't be your number one choice. So she's getting, she's getting sort of down the list votes as it is. And then she's vote splitting. So not only is she not, doesn't, does, does she have people not clamoring to vote for her, but she also simply just uh, is, she's getting vote, votes in both categories. Um, there's actually a, a fairly well-known critic that uh, his Oscar predictions have her in supporting actors. I'm dropping her completely from the race. I think Fableman's is a, is a film that Universal has tried to campaign and I don't know that the campaign has gotten stronger. I think if, if anything, it's leveled off or it's declined slightly. Ana de Armas has been nominated for too many things for people to ignore her at this point. I think she's the Kristen Stewart. I think she's the divisive nominee that that people didn't think are going to make it in and kept counting out and kept saying, well, it's not going to happen. It won't happen. It won't happen. It won't happen. Oh my God, Kristen Stewart got nominated. So I think if you don't predict Ana de Armas, I feel like that's the Kristen Stewart here. I think she also covers that Penelope Cruz surprise possibility because it's an NC-17 movie and it's never happened. So um, that would be the the left field choice. And when I look at Viola Davis and I'm trying to compare her to anyone else, I don't know who else would take that fifth spot. I mean, I seriously, I just don't think Michelle Williams is getting nominated. I think Margot Robbie's trending down. There seems to be some sort of weird hatred for Margot Robbie a lot of times that people talk about Oh, how she's she's losing her star status after Amsterdam and Babylon, and oh God, Barbie's gonna kill her career. And it's just her narrative is is eh, I don't know. Babylon doesn't seem to be that strong of a film. Uh, it, it, I could be wrong. I know it has its fans, but it also has its not fans. Uh, it has people who are very vocal against it, and um, I think Viola Davis just ends up sneaking in in that fifth spot. She did just enough. She's well respected. And I think she'll do enough. Honestly, I would not be totally surprised if there was an out of left field pick here in the fifth spot that wasn't Viola, like, like an Emma Thompson or, um, just something, <laughs> something totally wild and crazy that we just didn't, most people were like, what? <laughs> I just, <laughs> at this point, anything, you know? Because uh, I don't think it'll be Olivia Coleman. I, I just, I keep looking at the people. Um, people have started trending uh, uh, Andrea Riseborough up from to Leslie for that very reason. They think that she could find, that she could sneak in out of nowhere. And it's just, I Best actor, Kate McDonough, and best Brendan Fraser. All right, best actor. I'm going with Brendan Fraser, Colin Farrell, Austin Butler, Bill Nye, and Paul Mescal. That fifth spot is, that's a doozy. Uh, I just, I'm tired of talking about it and trying to figure out who's going to get this fifth spot. I went with Paul Mescal. I think After Sun is hitting at the right time. I think it's hitting right when they were doing nominations. Uh, I think that was when it was rising, was at the end. I think it's, there's something to be said for, I think Tom Cruise might be in sixth place, sixth position here. Uh, I think there are people who are voting for him for sure because of the success of Top Gun Maverick, but then... The, voting for the film. Top Gun Maverick already is the kind of film that doesn't get into Best Picture. So just the fact that it gets a Best Picture nomination is like a win. So it, I don't know that it needs Tom Cruise also. Um, Adam Sandler's not going to get a nomination here. Uh, Gabriel LaBelle, I just I don't think The Fablemans is, is as strong as people think it is anymore. It got one BAFTA nomination. Um, it's just, yes, it did get the Golden Globe for Best Picture. There's no overlapping voting body there. Uh, I think that's going to be a Steven Spielberg thing. I think there's a campaign. I think the Daniels have a really hard... Anyway, we'll get to that in a second. But um, I'm just not... I'm not on Gabriel LaBelle. I'm not on Diego Calva. Um, I I don't think All Quiet can break into the Best Actor race. Um, I Daryl McCormick for Good Luck to You, Leo Grand. That's a wild prediction. Jeremy Pope's Inspection just seems to not have taken off. Uh, I just, when I look at all of the people who could possibly land in this fifth place spot, the one that I think might be getting enough votes at the right time is Paul Mescal for After Sun. So, that's what I'm going with. Call it Austin, Bill, Paul, blank, 
blank. Best director. Best director. As I alluded to before, I think this is really between Steven Spielberg for The Fablemans and The Daniels for Everything Everywhere All at Once in terms of who's winning. Um, I think there are people who will vote for Spielberg even if they're not voting for The Fablemans. Um, just because of the love for him, he has inspired so many people to do what they're doing. It is a director's branch vote. It's not an everybody vote. So he's got uh, people who are in the game because of him. Uh, and I think that can matter. Or they could go for something wild and crazy and vote for the Daniels. I'm also predicting Todd Field for Tar and Martin McDonough for the Banshees of Inna Sharon. Uh, those are two safe bets. I think um, some people might argue that I should be predicting Boz Lerman, but I can tell you that my fifth spot is Edward Berger for All Quiet on the Western Front. There have been... Um, quite a few international nominees the past couple of years, in addition to an increasing amount of female nominees. It doesn't look like the female nominee is going to happen. Sarah Polly did have the best shots. Uh, Gina Prince Blythewood for The Woman King. I just, her film is just not a strong enough contender. Women Talking is not a strong enough contender. Charlotte Wells for Afterson is not a strong enough contender. There's just, they don't have the big films this year. Um, but what does it seem to be a big film is All Quiet on the Western Front. And that would qualify as the surprise fifth spot going to an international nominee. I know a lot of people wanted to go, it to go to the director of RRR. Uh, I think that's maybe possible. I think he's probably in sixth or seventh here, along with Boz Lerman. I think those are probably the sixth and seventh choices. Those would be the two names that I would be... If, if they were called, I, would be, I wouldn't I would be terribly surprised. Anybody else, I would be kind of like, uh, I don't, like, I don't think James Cameron's getting it. I, I don't think, you know, a bunch of other people down the line. So those are my five. Um, coming up next. Stevens, Edward Burke, blank, supporting actress. Supporting actress. Uh, this is this is hard, again. Uh, I went with Carrie Condon for The Banshees of Anna Sharon. Angela Bassett for Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, Jamie Lee Curtis for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Dolly DeLeon for Triangle of Sadness. And I'm Keeping Stephanie Hsu for Everything Everywhere All at Once. Uh, last time I talked about this category, I was talking about having Michelle Williams in here uh, and using Dolly DeLeon as a placeholder. Uh, I am technically still keeping that, but I am actually officially saying I think Dolly De Leon is going to get that nomination. I think Stephanie Hsu is going to get that nomination. Actually, the one I'm most worried about is Hong Chao uh, to disrupt my top five for The Whale. There seems to be a, un, a huge wave for everything everywhere. There's a lot of talk about whether or not they can both get in, um, and I don't know why. Because we seem to have no problem talking about both Banshees boys getting in. Uh, for a while we were talking about two Fablemans boys getting in. So, uh, and back in the day when Women Talking mattered, we were talking about two Women Talking nominations. So, I think, I think Stephanie, I think Everything Everywhere is a hot film that everybody's voting for. And I think Stephanie's going to do just enough to get in. She's not going to win. She'll do just enough to get in. Whereas Hong Chao for The Whale, I don't think that there's necessarily the same amount of passion for her film. I think people love her performance. This would just be another time where Hong Chao miss out, misses out on a nomination. Uh, it's unfortunate. I'm kind of hoping Carrie Mulligan doesn't sneak in because I really think that's a lead performance. Uh, but uh, I think that's that's basically it. No, Janelle Monae is not getting nominated. I'm sorry. Um, you're... you're your uh, hot multi, you know, blockbuster nomination film or whatever goes to Angela Bassett. When Angela Bassett became stronger in the race, she sucked the energy away from Janelle Monet. Not it has nothing to do with the black actress thing, by the way. I know that seems like <laughs> there can only be one. No, it's more of like the film. Like you're talking about like sequels and and the types of films. And I think she's just um, she's pulling too much focus away from Glass Onion away from the potential of, of somebody coming out of that film. So, uh, there you go. That's my Best Supporting Actress predictions. Carrie Condon. Dolly Day. Steph Blank. Supporting Actor. Supporting Actor. I'm going with, obviously, Kehui Kwan, because you would be insane not to. Um, he's won every award. Uh, <laughs> there's no way the Oscars aren't going to nominate him. 
even if he wasn't on the card, the person would just accidentally read off his name. <laughs> like, he was just, he would be Red Oscar Morning anyway. I mean, just assume it was a mistake. Um, Brendan Gleeson. Game is spelled uh, Brendan Gleeson. Barry Keoghan. Barry Keoghan. I'm still trying to learn how to pronounce this dude's last name. Keoghan. Uh, those are kind of like the top three. They're pretty safe. So we get down to the final two. And what have I done? What have I done? What, what have I done? I'm not predicting Fablemans at all. I had, I have to, when, when throwing my, my own, when, when doing my predictions, I have to think about what am I doing as a person and what am I doing as a predictor like like in my soul what am i am i am i ignoring somebody because i don't want it to happen am i trying to like uh not predict somebody because i don't think it they're deserving of a nomination but yet this whole time i've jumped on the barry keoghan uh bandwagon because he's been getting all this attention i didn't like his performance i didn't i didn't like it it, it wasn't my favorite thing in banshee's been a sharon um he was fine. I just don't think he deserves a, a, no, a nomination. And I've been thinking the same thing for Eddie Redmayne for for um, for the Good Nurse. I just I thought he was fine, but in the pantheon of Red, Eddie Redmayne performances, I much rather love like ten other performances from him. So uh, the fact that he's getting attention for the Good Nurse, yeah, it's a fine performance. I just don't know that it's like aren't there better performances this year? But I guess not. So, um, he's been nominated way too many times. I can't ignore that. So for this, the fifth spot, I think the Fablemans is, is not doing well. I think it's doing okay. I don't think it's strong. I do not think it is a strong film. I don't think it can win Best Picture. I think what you've seen, what you're seeing with Michelle Williams is, is troubling. Uh, yes, Paul Dana did make it in at BAFTAs. I'm not predicting him here. I'm actually going to predict Brian Tyree Henry for Causeway. I think Apple has had almost nothing to campaign this season. Uh, and they see one person with potential because obviously Will Smith wasn't going to happen. So they, I think they kind of dialed back on, on their emancipation campaigning. And I think they see possibly their one Apple Plus nomination <laughs> could go to Brian Tyree Henry. I've heard this dude has been everywhere. He's been showing up at everything, giving every kind of interview. <laughs> anything possible and I think uh people are watching Causeway oddly for him and not for Jennifer Lawrence at this point <laughs> so um I when I look at the other nominations the the fact of the matter is there are still people who love Judd Hirsch and if Paul Dano is down the list and he's vote splitting with Judd Hirsch if Judd Hirsch is taking if some if people can't vote for both Fableman's boys and some people are voting for only Judd Hirsch they're taking away from Paul Dano. Brian has no one else to vote for out of his film. I think he might be the fifth spot here. I also would not be shocked at this point to see that go to the All Quiet on the Western Front supporting actor, but I'm going with Brian Tyree Henry. You can follow me down my rabbit hole if you want. I feel so bad because I think Paul Dano deserves this nomination so much more than Eddie Redmayne. Um, but that is... That's where I'm at. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. Eddie Redmi, Brian Blank, Adapted Screenplay. Okay, so for Best Adapted Screenplay, this is where I have women talking. I still think it's getting in. Um, I think just because the BAFTAs uh, failed to nominate, it doesn't mean anything. I think Sarah Polly's script at least will get in for women talking. I think it's going to be the only nomination for women talking, but I'm voting for it. I also think it's going to be the only nomination for She Said. Women talking. I also think it's going to be the only nomination for Glass Onion. So, she Said. The Whale. <laughs> um, I also have The Whale and All Quiet on the Western Front and Adapted Screenplay. I feel pretty good about that list. Um, I don't know how many people have seen Living. I think people are voting for Bill Nye, even if they, you know, like, he just seems like somebody to vote for, even if you're not... <laughs> Like, you could possibly vote for Bill Knight even if you didn't see the film. Just because you're like, I worked with him. He was good. Actors branch people, right? Like, I love Bill Knight. I love working with him. I need somebody in, the, in this spot. I'm going to vote for Bill Knight. But you wouldn't necessarily vote for a screenplay you haven't read. So, um, I don't know that living is, is as strong in screenplay. So, those are my adapted screenplay nominations. All the blank, blank, original screenplay. 
original screenplay, um, I'm going with, actually, this is, this one's a lot easier, actually, at least for four, top four are really easy, um, Banshees of Inisherin, Everything Ever All at Once, The Fablemans, and Tar, and then for the fifth place spot, where you could go from Babylon, you could go for Triangle of Sadness, I'm veering and going for Afterson. I think Afterson might surprise here. I think Afterson, like I said, is coming around at the right time. Triangle of Sadness opened so long ago. So long ago. Uh, the thing that's happening there is Dali De Leon. Dali De Leon is, is the nomination for Triangle of Sadness. It's the thing that everybody's getting behind. Um, I think uh, Babylon is, is getting tech nominations. But I think uh, the opportunity to nominate Charlotte Wells for her script for Afterson uh, might be be like sort of like the same thing as being able to nominate Sarah Polly for her script at least you're getting a script nomination you know the banshees anyway. everything the fake tar after blank. that's where I'm at blank cinematography cinematography this is a big category um I've got Top Gun Maverick Top Gun Maverick Empire of Light The Fableman Empire The Fable All Quiet All Quiet on the Western Front Avatar and Avatar as you just heard my computer remind me of exactly. I didn't want to get into that. I think Top Gun's the front runner. I feel pretty good about these nominations. There isn't really anybody where I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that can get in. Um, I think All Quiet has is overperforming. Maybe. Blank. Uh, maybe that's the one that'll surprise some people. Um, I, I think some people are predicting the Batman here because it's gotten in some other places but I don't know what to take out for the Batman. Uh, I think Avatar underperformed at BAFTAs because Avatar was always going to underperform at BAFTAs, but I don't think it's going to underperform here in America. I think it's going to perform just as expected where it gets no acting nominations, no directing nomination, but it gets picture and a handful of tech categories. So, Costume. Costume design. This will be fun. I totally forgotten what I did here. Black Panther. Ooh, Black Panther. Uh, is that number one? Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Elvis. Elvis. Babylon. Babylon. The Woman King. The Woman King. Mrs. Harris Goes to and Paris. And for the fifth spot, I went with Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris. Blank. It's literally a film about about clothing. Like, it's, <laughs> like I, I think that's probably why it's going to go there. Um, I, I was between Mrs. Harris and Corsage, to be honest. Um, in terms of what to go here. Yes, I know some, a lot of people think Glass Onion's going to get it. I, so many films. When you get to that fifth place spot, you're just like, what do I do? <laughs> so my justification is Mrs. Harris Goes to Paris is literally Blank. about a woman seeking out a very specific dress that will make her life complete. And it's it's a film that's about fashion, so fuck it. I'm going for it. Best editing. Best editing. Everything Everywhere. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. The Fablemans. The Fablemans. All Quiet on the all Western, quiet on the Western Elvis. Front. And Elvis. This usually ties a lot in with Best Picture, um, with films that uh, have a chance to win Best Picture, um, in addition to a lot of times people say vote for the films that have the most editing. So the films that have like the most cuts, which is why you would go for something like Elvis, which even though I'm blind, I I've seen a Baz Luhrmann film. <laughs> I've seen a Baz Luhrmann film before when I could see. <laughs> and I can imagine what the film editing on a Baz Luhrmann Elvis film looks like. So I get it. Um, and I'm sure like the editing on Top Gun Maverick is, is all over the place and everything everywhere. So, I mean, I see that. So I think the strong, strong best picture contenders end up coming in here and getting the nomination. The one thing... Um, would be... All quiet on the Western Front. I guess... Elvis. Uh, you know, should Avatar be here? I don't know. It's an over three-hour film. Like, what do you do? You know? I know All Quiet is long. Um, I, I, you know, maybe Avatar sneaks in here. Blank. Um, I don't think it's gonna get te every single tech nomination, so... Blank. Um, Blank. All right. Makeup. Makeup. This was fairly easy at least for the top two uh the whale and elvis the whale elvis babylon and then i went with babylon all quiet on the western all front, quiet on the the western front and Blank. the batman uh, i feel like that's pretty safe all quiet did just get a makeup nomination somewhere else and 
from the descriptions that I've gotten of what those men went through, that's a lot of makeup. Um, I, that's the same reason, like, when you think about it, everybody was like, ooh, Crimes of the Future got shortlisted. Yeah, it probably should. It's a body horror film. Uh, you know, um, I'm guessing that was practical effects, so that's probably why it got nominated. <laughs> Hell, it could even finally get in here. This is the nominating body that voted for Suicide Squad, so... <laughs> Anything could happen. <laughs> if you don't think that there's a possibility that Crimes of the Future could be called off for best makeup and hairstyling, <laughs> you crazy. <laughs> I've already thought of that. I've already thought of, where's my Suicide Squad? <laughs> and it's like, I don't know. I don't know where it is. It's hard to predict that. So production I just design. went with the safe bits. Um, production design. Babylon. Babylon. Black Panther. Black Panther. Avatar. Avatar. Elvis. Elvis, and I'm going to go with Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio. Pinocchio blank. I think it's an interesting and surprising nomination. I think the production design committee likes Guillermo del Toro, and this is a, a, a category he usually does quite well in. Um, if there's anything that he knows how to do, it's production design. And the question is, will they nominate a stop-motion animated feature in production design? And I think... Right now, it's a 100 to 1 odds on Gold Derby. I This is one of the few risks I'm taking. I'm banking that this group loves Guillermo del Toro so much, like they have in the past, <laughs> that they will vote for his, his movie. <laughs> I really believe that. It has actually gotten production, nom production design nominations elsewhere. There's a precedent for it. No, it is not predicted in the top five. Like I said, it's a 100 to 1 odds. But if I get it right, it'll pay off dividends. <laughs> so, there you go. Blank. Blank. Original song. Original song. I just went with the... the, the, the Hold my hand. The same top five we're all going for. Hold my hand, Top Gun Maverick. Lift me up. Lift me up from Black Panther, Wakanda Forever. Natu Natu from RRR. Uh, Chow Papa from Pinocchio. And uh, Carolina from Red Across Ed Sing. I don't know what to do to change... Uh, because my brain keeps telling me to vote for Good Afternoon from Spirited. Because <laughs> um, that's the that's what I would be voting for. No but to Carolina. It's just not Blank. trending. So, uh, best original score. Blank. Score. Babylon. I went with Babylon because it's been winning a lot of things. And I think Justin Hurwitz's score has been widely accepted. I'm so happy that Tar is not... I'm so tired of people voting for Tar. There's no score there. I literally... I work in a music department... And it's a thing that I've literally talked about with people with music degrees who watched Tar, and they were like, why the fuck is this movie nominated for Best Original Score? <laughs> there's no score in this film. It, it plays during the credits. That's it. During the rest of the film, there's silence, and there's classical music. I don't know what score there is in this film. <laughs> so I'm so glad it was deemed ineligible. That was the correct decision. Anyway, I'm predicting Babylon. The Fablemans. The Fablemans, because... It's John Williams. This branch, this is John Williams' final score. Like, <laughs> of course they're going to vote for it, right? Like, there's no way. There's no way they don't vote to dominate at least John Williams' final Pinocchio. score. Anyway, uh, Pinocchio, because uh, it's been doing uh, pretty well in terms of getting nominations. So I think it's going to continue to get nominations in this category, get a nominate, by getting a nomination in this category. I said that in a weird way. All Quiet on the Western I'm Front. I'm All Quiet on the Western Front. I think uh, war scores are something that we like a lot, and I really just do not believe in women talking. Um, Blank. All Quiet. Pinocchio. So. The Fable. Babylon. Score. Babel. The Fable. Pinocchio. All Quiet. Blank. Shit, what was my fifth nominee? What did I keep as my... I only, I only typed in four. What was my fifth nominee? <laughs> oh my god. Um, I think it was, I don't know. It'll be a mystery. That'll be the mystery. I don't know what the fifth nominee was that I picked, but I, I, I've got Babylon, Fablemans, um, All Quiet, Pinocchio, and I don't know. I don't know what my other nominee was. I fucked that one up. Uh, so I have four or five nominees. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
and I can't off the top of my head figure out which one it would have been. I know I took Women Talking out for All Quiet, but what was the other nominee? Um, Banshees? I want to say it's Banshees. I'm going to say it's Banshees. I believe Banshees is in the fifth spot. Blank. So that's my, that's what I'm going with. Best sound. All right. I think I, I think I was trying to decide between Banshees and Everything Everywhere, and I went with Banshees. Um, best sound. Avatar. Avatar. Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. All Quiet on the Western Front. All Quiet. Front. Everything Everywhere. Everything Everywhere All at Once. Elvis. And Elvis. That's my best sound. And oddly enough, this is one of the categories, if you play Gold Derby, I super betted this category. That's how, how good I feel about it. I don't know how they don't nominate a war film. War films do really well here because you get the, the zooming of the bullets and the explosions and everything. It's pretty much a safe bet to not to think that All Quiet is going to get at least a nomination here. Top Gun with the jets flying and everything. Elvis is a music thing. I mean, everything. This this, this thing lines up perfectly. So I I get every every nomination. Blank. Here. Blank. Visual effects. Visual effects. This is where I did not go with the Gold Derby Top 5. And I'll tell you why when I get done. Avatar. Avatar. Top Gun Maverick. Top Gun Maverick. Nope. Nope. The Batman. The Batman. All Quiet. And All Quiet on the Western Front. Now, uh, what you'll notice is the lack of Marvel films. Um, there's, uh, the Marvel visual effects people are constantly rushed. And there's a lot of comments about how their, um, their visual effects look rushed. Uh, because they are. Because Marvel literally forces them under these extreme circumstances. I've known people who work in VFX for, have, who have done VFX for Marvel films, and they hate it. I mean, they're so happy when they get done and they look at their projects and they feel, of course, rewarded by the work that they did, but the the impossible deadlines, the work schedules and everything that they have to do to meet these crazy deadlines is a lot. Marvel films typically have missed out here. There have been a lot of Marvel films where people have been like, oh, it'll get in because it, it had... Uh, no, it didn't get in. Um, so it ends up being the surprise where people try to predict a Marvel film here. Yes, I think the first Black Panther got in and that was a different thing because it got like 10 nominations. I don't think Wakanda Forever has quite the same thing behind it. So um, I went a different route. I, I went a different route with the visual effects... So, I think uh, All Quiet has been overperforming, and while Nope is oddly low, it's a film that I think everybody watched, and uh, it has a lot of, I mean, it has the whole thing in the sky, so I don't know, I just, it's hard for a blind person, I'm con you have a blind person commenting on visual effects, I just want you to realize what's happening right now, so. Blank. But that's why I, I have no Marvel movies. I just worked around them. My category just went... I went kind of down the list, but I just knocked out the Marvel movies and went with the next next one down the line. Best Animated. Best Animated. Um, this was... Uh, well, four of these are, are locks. Uh, the fifth one, you can do what you want. Uh, Pinocchio, Marcel, the show with shoes on, uh, turning red, um, Puss in Boots, and for the fifth spot, I kept Wendell and Wild. I've had it there for a while. I looked at the other nominees... There's a there's the voice in the back of my head that says it's gonna go to it's they're gonna pull what Golden Globes did and they're gonna pick some weird one of those weird animated films that nobody has seen uh, that's from some other country and elevate it because a lot of the other nominees aren't that strong. The other part of me says of the nominees that we know, this is Henry Selleck. Uh, it's it's stop motion uh, that would put three stop motion nominees in the same category. I would be sort of epic with if stop motion actually beat traditional hand drawn animation in its own category. <laughs> so I could see I can already see the articles being written about that, <laughs> about how uh, three stop motions and two traditional animations. So anyway, um, I I'm just gonna go with Wendell and Wild. Um, Pinocchio, so. Marcel turning. Puss That's Wendell where I'm and sticking. Blank, blank. Plus it's got Netflix behind it. So does My Father's Dragon. But in order for you to nominate My Father's Dragon, I challenge you to watch My Father's Dragon. 
That's a thing we haven't talked about. It's not that great. Documentary. Documentary. Um, this one's, uh, yeah, it's, it's all right. There's, yeah, there's at least, I think there's three nominees here that everybody agrees on. Um, all the Beauty and the Bloodshed, All That Breathes, and Fire of Love seem to be getting in everywhere. I think Moon Age Daydream, uh, I think Summer of Soul proved that if you make a music doc good enough, it will get nominated at the at the Oscars. Traditionally, this branch has not been kind to that type of documentary before. So I think that's why some people are not predicting it. Um, I'm predicting Moon Age Daydream. It's a doc... It's almost too successful. It's dangerously successful because documentary features traditionally have also shied away from the ones that made money. Uh, they, this is a weird branch. Um, so I could see a lot of reasons why Moon Age Daydream does not get in. And for my fifth spot, I went with Descendant. I looked at the other nominees that could possibly get in, and I don't know where they are. I don't know who's backing them. But I do know Netflix has Descendant, and it will make sure that everyone in the documentary branch has seen Descendant. All the so, beauty. Um, All that breathes. Moon Age Day. Fire of Love. Descendant. And Blank. between that and uh, the other documentary that I know Netflix has, Last Flight Home, uh, Descendant is ranked higher on Gold Derby, so it's closer. Um, so I want Descendant. I would prefer the James to be in the top five. That would be a nice surprise. I loved that documentary, but it just doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So international, um, international feature. This is one of the strongest races for international features ever. Uh, I, in my, my opinion, I think when you look at the list, there are fans of almost all of these films. Um, so this is a really tough category. Uh, thank God RR isn't in this category because it would, it would make it even harder. But, um, you have your top two that you have to predict. I'm sorry, you have to put Off Quiet and Decision to Leave here. There's no way they're not getting nominated. So below that, you talk about, okay, so who are the other three? Well, Argentina 1985 has shown up pretty much everywhere it needs to. Um, it even won the Golden Globe for international feature. I don't think it's ever been left out of a of a, any sort of important uh, voting branch. So I think that's pretty much a lock. Um so finally we get down to the last two spots and for the last two spots i'm going with close and the quiet girl um i know that there are tons of films here i know people want joyland to get in i know people want eo to get in um ice critics love eo they do they love eo um but i've also seen the quiet girl has been getting a little bit of momentum I, and close i believe is backed by a24 so, um, A24 has a lot of things in play right now. Um, so, I think those last two spots are kind of open, close and, and, uh, and The Quiet Girl, but I'm going, those are the two I'm going with. I also think EO and Joyland could show up. Um, and yeah, that's it. So. All Quiet, Decision, Argent, Closed, The Quiet, Blank. Maybe Corsage. Animated Short. Animated Short. The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. The Boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse. This is literally, by the way, uh, I just went and did the Gold Derby Top 5 uh, for all of these. I know not, I've seen The Boy. This is the only one I've seen in this category. The Boy, the, boy, the Mole, the Fox, and the Horse is Apple. It's got Apple pushing it. That's the only reason I... I mean, it's at the top of my list. They, they're, I don't know where these other four are or how to watch them. New Moon. New Moon. Save Ralph. Save Ralph. The Flying Sailor. The Flying Sailor. My Year of Dick. My Year of Dick. Blank. There you go. That's another one. Doc Short. Documentary Short. I've seen the top three here. I've seen The Flag Makers. I've seen 38 at the Garden. And I've seen The Elephant Whispers. So I felt safe in predicting all of them. And along with them, I put uh, How Do You Measure a Year and Holding Moses. The Flag... The L... 30... How do you holding blank? Uh, for live action short, no, I don't think anybody ever watches any of these. Uh, I don't even know where to watch them. Blank. But, uh, live action short. I went with, uphill. Uh, love uphill or whatever that that one. I don't know. An Irish goodbye. An Irish goodbye. Warshaw. Warshaw. The red suitcase. The red suitcase. Nicom. And uh, Nicome. Um, I love that my thing can't pronounce it. Anyway, uh, those are my. Those are, they're, they're, those are gold derby top five I just went with what everyone else is going with 
Um, I know nothing about that category. I don't perceive to know anything about <laughs> live action sort. I don't know who made these films. I don't know where they're coming from. I don't know if I can watch any of them. Nobody's giving me screeners. I have nothing. Nothing. I know nothing about them. So I couldn't predict them. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Um, God bless. And um, those are my Windows final did. predictions. And we will see what my score is. I got 80% at BAFTAs. I would really love to move up more on this. For somebody who's predicting the Oscars and it had a whole segment on talking Oscars all this time, I would really love to uh, to be able to actually have something tangible that says, yes, I know what I'm talking about. I, do, I did take a few risks trying to predict those risks, trying to predict those random nominations is really hard. There's the Penelope Cruz factor from last year. Nobody really saw her coming. So who is the nominee that nobody really sees coming? What is it? And I think it comes in the form of snubs also. Like people were surprised when Lady Gaga didn't get in. So maybe the lack of Fableman's acting nominations is, is the surprise. I don't know. I don't know what people would consider to be the surprise, the out of left field choice. I have no idea. Paul Mescal could qualify as the Penelope Cruz. If enough people believe that he won't get it, I better go to Tom Cruise. Hell, he could be the, the Penelope Cruz here. I don't know. Um, Ana de Armas quali should qualify as that. She's in an NC-17 film that virtually everyone hates. So there you go. Um, this has been my final talking Oscars in terms of predictions. My next one will be an actual reaction and we'll recap and I'll tell you how well I did. Um, but thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing and uh, tuning into my reviews and I will see you on the other side.